hello welcome to muhammad umar farooq biology so in this video we will learn about the chemistry of anesthetic so biochemistry of anesthetic and the we will understand about the mood of action and how it will work so our nervous system controls uh, touch response when something will be touched in our body we get response and pain response movement uh due to the nervous system and this all thing is basically uh voluntary the consciousness the voluntary while the subconsciousness is the autonomic nervous system which control the heart beat and the digestive system and other things and alive and alertness so this is a nervous system person contain brain and spinal cord is the central nervous system while the peripheral region contain peripheral nervous system so the anesthetic target can be intravenous or uh, inhalation and directly target to nerves and uh, the central nervous system directly target or inhalation so let's begin to understand first the history of the anesthetic and how we can categorize the historical uh, uh, data so the diethyl ether is 8042 uh the diethyl ether was using uh but a nitrous oxide also used in 1844 and this uh basically the first clinical use of the anesthetic and the sign and symptom of this anesthetic is nausea vomiting for diethyl ether while the nitrous oxide is still using and it is also known as the laughing gas so the inhalation can basically uh, create uh, the anesthetic property while on the other hand this is the cocaine cocaine is basically organic compound 1884 uh, it is uh, used in 1884 while the lidocaine lidocaine is used in 1948 and the cocaine was the first local anesthetic the local anesthetic mean and uh, the for example the mouth uh, if we will give the anesthetic to the mouth for surgery so we can target but that use is no rare but lead uh, lead uh, lido coin uh, widely used as a local anesthetic while well, let's here is the propofol and the propofol used in 1989 uh, while the uh, sevo uh, sevo flu rain used in 1990 so this propofol is a intravenous anesthetic will transfuse into the blood circulatory system will lead to cause the unconsciousness or subconscious unconsciousness so the propofol is the most common intravenous general anesthetic today we are using and while halogenated hydrocarbons and ethers are the most commonly used inhaled anesthetic so let's begin to understand the type of anesthetic on the basis of the location the region and how it will um, give the uh, 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 anesthetic property so general anesthetic will makes unconsciousness and sensation free throughout the body while on the other hand the regional uh, anesthetic is the numbs and area of the body such as with epidural so the local anesthetic is also used so the local anesthetic is basically the uh, used for the location uh, specific location for example hand mouth and this this anesthetic is the targeted anesthetic but this is the regional anesthetic is the numbs and area of the body such as with epidural while here is the local anesthetic mean the numbs or small area and uh, for example dental operation will use this anesthetic while on the other hand the sedation sedation mean the drowsy and relaxed person and no unconscious not unconscious or non unconscious and in this way the patient can feel and can sense the uh, uh, environment and the not uh, unconsciousness so let's begin to understand how anesthetic work 
that is important things so the coordination and co coordination control first of all we will learn how coordination control so this is when stimulus will stimulate the afferent neuron the sensory neuron after the sensory neuron will receive the signal will uh, fire in this way the depolarization will occur so this is the neuron contains so much one cell and exon and nerve end so after the stimulation it will give the signal through our depolarization and the signal will move through a saltatory conduction for example we are uh, and in this way the stimulation to afferent or in uh, interneuron so the efferent sorry efferent neuron stimulation and in this way after the synapse with the efferent neuron or interneuron after this interneuron the motor neuron will be give the signal after the integration in the brain to the muscle and for the muscle movement and in this way the efferent neuron basically uh, it is a motor neuron contain neuro uh, neurotransmitter acetylcholine will bond with the muscle receptor neurotransmitter receptor and after this binding the neurotransmitter receptor the neuromuscular junction this synapse is known as the neuromuscular junction this is the epimysium endomysium and this is the muscle cells and this is the muscle fiber basically the muscle fiber will compose with the sarcomere and the sarcomere is the contractile unit of the muscle so contraction will occur in the sarcomere so remember after the binding with the uh, in the neuromuscular junction the acetylcholine neurotransmitter the sodium will move inside will lead to depolarization of the muscle fiber uh, muscle cell will lead to calcium influx and the calcium influx will bind with the troponin after the binding with the troponin will the contraction will occur so this is the structure basically here you can see this let's begin to understand the synapse one neuron will transmit the signal to other another how so here is the anesthetic will bind with the sodium channel will lead to block while this is a presynaptic neuron and in this way the sodium will not enter inside of the cell so the depolarization will impossible to so lead to stop the fire and the postsynaptic neuron and the presynaptic neuron will not uh, integrate and in this way the signal will not transmit and that is why the anesthetic will target to the sodium channel for blockage so this is the neurotransmitter as a neuromuscular junction we will discuss in this way the acetylcholine neurotransmitter are present in the presynaptic neuron the neuron end terminal the synaptic knob which that exocytose the neurotransmitter will target to the neurotransmitter receptor acetylcholine receptor after the binding with the acetylcholine receptor but the sodium will move inside will lead to contraction but here is the sodium block due to the uh, drug the anesthetic and in this way the no movement of the muscle in this way the paralyze for instant and the uh, paralyze for a while so thanks for watching this is a video about the chemistry of anesthetic the biochemistry of anesthetic